Well, several times in this series, I've mentioned the term meaningful metrics. And how do we collect and analyze those meaningful metrics? Well, critical success factors are what we would call meaningful metrics. These are actions, these are events that are necessary to reach our strategic enterprise goals. Indicators provide important input into effective risk management and to ensure that the critical success factors are achieved. Indicators and metrics can either be risk indicators or performance indicators. Let's go ahead and break down the difference between risk indicators and performance indicators. Risk indicators are metrics that are going to present to us risks that have been assessed, also the trending loss exposure, whereas performance indicators are metrics concerned with the decision-making process, the execution of programs and processes and projects, for example. Critical success factors are actions and events that are necessary to reach strategic enterprise goals. The word key in key indicator is obviously important because we want the metrics that are meaningful, measurable, and actionable. Let's talk KPIs, key performance indicators. KPIs are also called critical performance factors, okay, CPFs. These determine how well a process or a program is performing to allow a specific goal, in our case, a specific security goal to be reached. Meaningless security performance metrics abound. And that's an important thing to understand. There's a lot of noise, a lot of meaningful noise out there. Now, KPIs can be placed into three categories. First, visibility. Visibility must quickly recognize what aspects of the security landscape are changing. For example, new network connections, the lack of boundary, for example, with the next generation CPE, okay, new network technologies. For example, we've got Verizon category M1 coming up, right, to support IoT and IOE. So these new technologies, satellite technologies, uh, the usage of Cisco Umbrella and Open DNS, working with a, a CASP, uh, like, for example, Palo Alto Network's Aperture. So thinking about some of these new technologies, you know, website certificate pinning, those types of things, uh, SaaS technology, Workday, Office 365, uh, DLP, data loss prevention solutions for end users. So these are visibility KPIs. There's also what we call variance, variance management KPIs, okay? This is looking for discrepancy causes, changes in rates, okay? Informing us about varying changed expectations, changes in support with, you know, we're not getting our SLAs met, for example, with a provider. Uh, changes in communication and motivation from a partner or a vendor, okay? To deliver metrics about variance needs to be in all areas of controls, administrative, physical, and technical. The third type of KPI is a decision-making KPI. This helps empower future strategic and operational decisions. Here's some examples of KPIs. A CISO knowledge base, okay? Your knowledge base that's built on the risk registry, it's built on lessons learned, it's built on after action reports and other reporting. Also compliance policy metrics. That would be an example of a KPI. Another example is changes to risk profiles or risk posture. How about the status of patches and updates? I can't tell you how just having recent patches and updates and hot fixes can solve 85% of your problems, okay? So that is a KPI example. It'd also be an example of a KRI, which we'll talk about a key risk indicator, okay? So if you have up-to-date patches and, and updates, that should be an indication of you having less risk, okay, or lowering risk. Another example is an analyzing the deliverables from a service provider, an ISP or a cloud service provider. Other KPIs could be exceptions, variances, and anomalies whenever you're involved, let's say, in high-risk endeavors. And then unauthorized events and incidents could also be a KPI as well as a KRI. Let's take a look at some security KPIs from ITIL. 
Okay, so we have, for example, the number of implemented preventative measures, okay, the number of security measures implemented in response to identified threats. How about the implementation duration, okay? Uh, how long uh, have you implemented that countermeasure? The number of major security incidents, that's a KPI. The number of security-related service downtimes. Security tests, okay? Uh, how many tests and trainings have you carried out? That's a key performance indicator. And the number of identified shortcomings during the security test, maybe a gap analysis, okay? Or an after action report. Those are some security KPIs from ITIL. Now, closely related to KPIs are key risk indicators, okay? Key risk indicators are a subset of risk indicators that represent a very pertinent and they display a high probability of indicating or forecasting risk, okay? These are more subject to external factors than KPIs and KGIs, which are key goal indicators, okay? These are indicators or trends that existing risk tolerance or your risk appetite may be exceeded, okay? These can be early warnings of potential risk events. And you need to include input from key stakeholders, and you need to focus on both strategic and operational aspects. They're based on a combination of factors, okay? Impact. KRIs are most likely high impact and high magnitude, but they're easier to monitor and report, okay? There's also reliability. KRIs must have a high correlation factor with specific risks, okay? A solid predictor of outcomes, meaningful metrics. There's also a sensitivity, which means they must be accurately expressing risk variances over time and changing conditions. Here are some common key risk indicators. Loss metrics, for example, data being lost or data being leaked. Credit card numbers, social security numbers, okay? Threat event frequency metrics, okay? How often this year has one of your endpoints been hit with a ransomware attack? Threat capability metrics, okay? How much more successful, how much more knowledgeable are those external attackers getting at penetrating your firewall and your other defenses and in-depth solutions? And control condition metrics. What is the status of your administrative, technical, and physical controls? Dashboards are very effective at showing us indicators, showing us both risk metrics and performance metrics using various gadgets and modules and visibility tools. Here we see a dashboard showing indicators. This is from the Red Hat Network Satellite. As you can see, a wide variety of test results using OpenSCAP. Finally, we have key goal indicators, KGIs. KGIs inform management retroactively of an IT or an IS process that's met established enterprise goals and requirements. It's often reported in terms of consensus information. In other words, a key goal indicator typically comes from a wide variety of inputs, okay? Uh, for example, your compliance to Sarbanes-Oxley or HIPAA or PCI DSS, reporting on the control effectiveness, Gap analysis in your accreditation or your certification. You may use the KGI to contribute to official filings and mandates. When you're doing your key goal indicators, it's really important to define clear and concise objectives and get consensus. Like I said, these typically come not from one source, but from a consensus, maybe a steering committee, okay? These are gonna output meaningful metrics when you properly construct them, right? Because these are based on the ability, your success at meeting goals, okay? So KGIs will inform management retroactively of the success of your IT or IS process.